to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Just because you are outside, the only advantage that those inside have over you is just comfort. That's all. As far as reception is concerned, everything God is doing here is doing outside. And for those of you following online, the same applies to you. Hallelujah. Like our bishop said tonight, it's a very special night. I'll only be teaching for a few minutes and we'll just allow the Lord have a mighty convocation over this land. And if you are here, and you're yet to write your requests please you can do that very quickly those online i'm sure there should be a way of sending it uh, in the course of the meeting will be very fast we we'll just ask you to give the ushers and they'll have it and we'll be praying here two prayer points before we sit prayer point number one father tonight is my night let the heavens be opened over my destiny. Lift your voice and please pray. visited Sarah as he has said he did unto Sarah as he has spoken the Lord is able to save to the uttermost is able to heal to the uttermost
this corporate anointing, trusting that your word will come with power. And whilst your word comes, oh God, let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. There are hungry and thirsty people who have come to encounter grace. Let none live disappointed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. God bless you. There are just two things I want to request from you. Please. Number one, inside, outside. I'd like you to pay attention to discuss the subject of enlightenment. And I did say yesterday night how that it is the plan of God in redemption that the entirety of God's creation experience growth and advancement and enlargement. The Bible says that the path of the just is like a shining light and it says it shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. And so that on account of the possibilities that the faith life provides that one of the blessings that come with the faith life in Christ is capacity to increase to expand in Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the Bible says and Jesus increased himself in wisdom stature and favor with God and also with men hallelujah he blessed Abraham and he spoke to him and said, I will increase you exceedingly and that kings and nations will come out of you. So it is in God's uh, dealings with men to see that we increase. He never desires that we remain at the same level of grace, the same level of influence, the same level of spiritual experience. Hallelujah. And I did tell us yesterday that even biology supports growth. That everything that is alive grows one of the characteristic of living things is that they grow they increase they expand spiritually intellectually in stature there is growth no one is born an adult are we together that both plants and animals are exposed to the growth system so growth is a is one of the the blessings of being in Christ but then I did point out to us also that there is a price. Please pay attention. That enlargement and increasing in capacity in this kingdom comes with a price. It comes with a price. In fact, the entire faith life and the kingdom life by extension always has conditions attached to the blessings and the promises. Deuteronomy chapter 28 for instance and verse 1 says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and to observe all that I've commanded you that you will be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon you and overtake you there are conditions that if and when met they will provide a platform for growth for increase for our excelling in this kingdom and we began a journey examining the price and the conditions that make for enlargement for increase spiritually territorially um, and so on and so forth and the first that we considered for yesterday night was the price of accurate or correct perception jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 11 and he said unto me son of man what seest thou and he said the rod of an almond tree he says thou has well seen you have seen correctly and as a result i will hasten my word the one you have seen to perform not the one that i spoke the one you saw i will hasten it to perform it amplified says i am alert and active watching over my word to perform it in genesis chapter 13 we began to read the discourse when abraham and lot now were at a point of separation when Lot had left Abraham and went to settle near Sodom, the Bible says that the Lord spoke to him and from where thou art, lift up your eyes northwards and southwards, eastwards and westward. He says that for as far every land that your eyes can see. I told you expansion starts with your eyes, not your feet. It is what you can see. Are we together now? 
very very important as far as your eyes can see to you i will give as an inheritance that our perceptions are very important we looked at the story of the 12 spies who were sent to spy the land 10 returned with all kinds of reports and they said we did see that it was a good land these are the grapes the fruit of the land but then they confessed that we are not able because the men there the anakims they are men of stature and we were like grasshoppers before them in our eyes and caleb steal them and said no we are able to go up at once the bible called their poor perception an evil report hallelujah so how that we are unable to expand and move from where we are to the next place of prophecy and destiny if our perceptions are not based on scripture philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus permit this mind there was a belief system that made the holy spirit rest upon jesus comfortably there was a belief system that sponsored his excelling why he walked upon the earth and the bible says to permit that same mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus are we together and then this morning we took the second key for those who were not around that the second price that you pay for enlargement and expansion is the price of spiritual warfare the bible lets us know that we are not alone in this side of god's kingdom that the whole world lieth in wickedness it lets us know that there is a demonic system there is a satanic cadre that are out to destroy to tear everything down that looks like god and we did examine the journey of jesus christ the bible says when the evening was come they decided to sail to the other side to go to the land of the gatherings and it was on account of their desire to move forward to expand the bible says there arose a storm of wind still remember and I shared with us this morning that every storm is made of two elements. The wind, the invisible part, and the water, the visible part. It is the wind that empowers the water to be boisterous. So every situation that arises as a storm is made of two elements. There is a spirit component and then there is the physical expression of it. That to judge things just based on the physical appearance is not a spiritual man's approach every wind is or every storm is made up of the union between wind and water the one that gets to you is the water but it is the wind that empowers it are we together and we said it was on account of the salvation of 10 cities that these spirits that were resident in the chief evangelists around gadara who we call the madman the demoniac but his destiny was that of an evangelist he was trapped by these spirits a legion of them and they began to manipulate the weather jesus knowing this got up and said shalom be still and the weather was calm and they appeared at the other side and they saw this man he was saved and as a result of his salvation 10 cities were saved so that every battle that you face that many times the storms and the challenges that come to your life are proofs that you are making progress the only reason why they met a storm was because they were on their journey moving if they did not take on that journey there would be no storm are we together now praise the name of the lord the price of spiritual warfare the ability to subdue the powers that be through the mystery of the blood the mystery of the word the mystery of the name we considered isaiah 49 and there it began to speak how that even the lawful captive shall be delivered we said a lawful captive is one who there is a legal access there is a legal basis upon which the devil inflicts and oppresses them and that for these kinds of people it is the mystery of the blood that brings them liberty are we together the bible says we overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony so we took our time to pray extensively in the morning that prayer is the platform among other things it allows you and affords you the opportunity to engage the blood to engage the word and to engage the name mark chapter 11 and verse 24 he says um what things soever ye desire he says when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them so prayer is the platform for receiving 
are we together now very important and tonight very quickly within the time that we have I will just touch on um, maybe one or two more secrets that govern expansion and movement advancement at a territorial level and so on and so forth we had the honor today of visiting uh, some of the the properties and the projects that this great ministry is um, embarking on the land massive massive property an amazing one and then the hospital and a number of projects i was marvelously blessed it is comforting and it is consoling to see faith in action hallelujah it's one thing to say it but it's another thing to see the hand of god bring it to pass the end of faith is a performance the end of faith is a performance hallelujah so please pay attention because whilst the word of god comes there is the spirit component of the word that empowers you to have an understanding let me share with you a vision i had years ago and then we'll get straight to the teaching of the word it will be a brief time just exhorting us because we have a lot to do tonight many years ago i was praying and whilst i was praying i was caught up in the realm of the spirit and i was taken to a place and i saw a giant door it looked like an ancient door and i stood in front of that door and the door was made of many smaller doors many smaller doors made up the main door and i noticed that those smaller doors were opening and closing opening and closing and every time they open light would just come from them and i looked at the smaller doors and on every door there was a scripture that was written and the spirit of the lord told me that these doors represent dimensions in the spirit and these dimensions are governed by a mystery written in those scriptures every time you catch the mystery the light represents the grace dimension to defend that revelation so every revelation that you actually catch in the spirit there is an engracing from god that empowers you to walk in the reality of it whatever you claim to teach and know without the grace to demonstrate its validity is not yet life to you the bible says they are life to those who find them not those who are aware it is there it is those who find them hallelujah Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says arise it says shine not because you are tired of sitting no you don't arise because of time you arise because of light it says arise shine for thy light is come it's always been around but the day it comes to you that is the day you arise and it says the glory of the Lord is risen upon you I always like to quote from Amplified. It says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. That the people that sat in darkness, they have seen a great light. John chapter 1 and verse 5 says, The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Listen, please listen to me. Um, Co laborers in the gospel and then the body of Christ over this territory. In this kingdom, we excel on the strength of superior spiritual knowledge, illumination that we have. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. Our ability to understand the ways of God. Just because eternal life or the faith life provides access to a life of victory and grace, does not mean you will just walk in it arbitrarily it takes knowledge Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 Paul was lamenting while mentoring the church in Ephesus and he says having their understanding darkened he says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them spiritual ignorance is able to make a man though saved not able to walk into the fullness of that which was purchased for in Christ he says an heir as long as he's a child that he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all and so before i begin to speak to you and i'm hoping that the holy spirit will use this introduction to plant in you a passion for superior spiritual knowledge 
you do not have anything to say if you are not grounded and rooted in the word you see the word of god defines the boundary of god's commitment to the believer god cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provision that scripture allows so the more you are sound in doctrine thoroughly furnished in the word you sustain the tools to produce victory hallelujah and even signs and wonders like we'll be experiencing shortly tonight are at the instance of the word it does not just happen it is when you hear the word in Acts chapter 8, the Bible says from verse 5, please give it to us so that I tidy up this introduction and this recap. Acts chapter 8 and verse 5, the Bible says, Philip the evangelist, that he went down to Samaria and the Bible says he preached Christ unto them. So it started with a declaration, preaching Christ. He communicated the gospel like Bishop said so powerfully with power and with understanding. The next verse, it says, verse 6, the people with one accord those who were about to receive these miracles the first thing they did was to pay attention to the preaching of the word you see the difference between a herbalist and the system of God is a herbalist does not necessarily need your attention and it does not necessarily need a relationship all he needs is just compliance to the rules but when you come to the Lord the first thing is that he beckons on you your attention because it is the hearing of faith that produces miracles are we together so the Bible says the people with one accord they gave heed to those things which Philip speak hearing and seeing listen a real ministry must bring people to a point where they both hear and see a ministry that hears alone is not an absolute it's not a correct template for ministry if it is the God of heaven you are representing people must both hear and see God does not only speak, He does. We, this is one of the reasons why we need impartation. So that the things that people have been hearing, they will now see. When people hear and see, they will be convicted. Is that true? The things that our eyes have seen, that our ears have heard, that our hands have handled even of the word of life that that is the things that we teach so the bible says please keep that scripture there that he spoke about the things that hearing and seeing the miracles which he did what were the miracles the bible does not leave us in the dark for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed as a result there was great city great joy in the city of Yola when there is a manifestation of the reality when Jesus Christ and the faith life does not just become theory when the kingdom is made manifest in the midst of God's people it brings joy and in this kingdom your strength comes from your joy hallelujah he says hitherto you have asked for nothing he says ask that you might receive to the end that your joy be full all of the things that we are going to be celebrating tonight the miracles the signs and the wonders are to the end that there be joy in our lives when you buy a car it's not about the metal you are moving it is joy you are looking for when god opens a door for you it is joy no wonder the bible says that in his presence there is fullness harvest never comes until you are in the atmosphere of joy that he that sows in tears he will reap not with joy in joy in joy in joy if you want food you have to enter the kitchen so you are in the kitchen in joy it is a realm that you must enter to have a harvest if you are not in joy there is no possibility of a harvest are we learning number three the third price that you must pay if you want to experience increase and enlargement is the price of building your faith the third price that every believer must pay the laborious price of building your faith let's discuss the subject of faith for a few minutes faith the Bible has a lot to say about faith. Four times in scripture, the Bible declares that the just shall live by faith. 
that in this kingdom we live by faith are we together Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4 it is one of the most comprehensive uh, compendium of the faith work it discusses the subject of faith in detail and here's what Apostle Paul says about faith he says now faith is this is the first information he gives us about faith that faith is not worse faith will not will be that if it is faith it always is now faith is now faith is always alive is living he calls it the substance of things hoped for please look up and then he calls faith the evidence of the things you have not seen he says for by this spiritual substance that we have come to name faith he said our elders obtained a good report then verse 3 says it is through faith that we understand we were not there when it happened but through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god so that the things that appear were children that came out of an unseen realm this is an information that we believe by faith are we together then as we read on he says time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak men who through faith it says subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions women who received their dead back to life the character of faith what is faith faith let me give you my definition of faith faith is the name given I pray that you will understand this that faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his word the name given to the action not the believing believing is not faith believing is part of the process that leads to faith faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction based on your conviction everywhere you see the bible mentioned faith in scripture is predicated upon your conviction persuasion something god has said that you believe and then the end of your believing is that you know the participatory condition that supports actualizing that promise you see the bible please let's discuss doctrine for a few minutes the bible basically contains three things number one the bible contains promises please write it down the bible essentially contains promises number one then the bible contains principles number two god's modus operandi his system of operation they are hidden in mysteries the principles of the kingdom and then number three the bible contains prophecies so every time you open your bible you are like a spiritual archaeologist exploring promises principles and prophecies promises represents the commitment of god to you principles represent the modus operandi of the kingdom the system by which we obtain results matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus was teaching while he walked upon the earth and the bible says when he called his disciples privately explaining these parables to them he said because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom everyone say mysteries the mysteries of the kingdom represent a body of truth that are hidden only to those who are in the kingdom a mystery is a hidden code of operation are we together the DSS or the military people they have hidden codes of operation they have words that they use you have to be in that fold to understand what they are saying they are called mysteries you can come to a house and a husband and a wife they have hidden codes of communication in that house if you are a visitor and you are not part of that family you may not understand in this kingdom we excel on the strength of the mysteries that we know so anyone who is not part of the fold may not understand why we do the things that we do for instance 
that to rise in this kingdom financially among the many other principles the bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. it's a mystery it does not make sense until you are in the kingdom why will you be in the kingdom and have challenges before you and then you begin to dance and sing praises no what you do physically is to call the police and get lawyers and begin to cry but in the kingdom you are dancing and celebrating because it is a mystery it says i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise by this formula prayer and praise shall i be saved from my enemies so every time you are overwhelmed you introduce this mystery the mystery of prayer the mystery of praise that's what happened at midnight when paul and silas when they were overwhelmed it is a law not a psalm it was a spiritual law that was hidden in the psalm that every time you are in trouble and you are overwhelmed call upon the lord prayer and then praise the union of prayer and praise always produces deliverance are we together now just knowing this alone will grant you grace to continue to triumph over situations that would have kept you down when we say you are matured in this kingdom spiritual growth is not measured by longevity in church no ne not necessarily you can be there for a long time and yet not grow there are two biblical indices that are used to measure spiritual growth number one the degree to which the character of the christ is formed in you in experience that is the first biblical index that shows that you are growing it says my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you the formation of christ the character of christ and that the character of christ is formed through a process that we call transformation transformation the name given to the process that makes you become like christ in experience the second biblical index for measuring spiritual maturity is your depth of comprehension of the ways of god you are mature to the degree to which you are able to handle the word of life effectively like the sword like a veteran in the army able to use the sword all of these spiritual arsenals the shield of faith the sword of the spirit which is the word of god that with it you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil are we still together just a digression to put things in perspective so faith is based on two qualities of god please listen carefully let's go to scripture there are two qualities of god that bible faith is based on if it is bible faith two qualities of god the first quality is found in numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 there are two spiritual qualities of god that produce bible faith in the believer number one is called his integrity everyone please read what is projected numbers 23 and verse 19 let's read in concert one to read stop 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 this is a very important information God is not a man. Say it after me, please. God is not a man. He became a man, but he is not a man. If you say God is a man, he must worship who created him. So God is not a man. He only became a man so that he can save men. But God is not a man. And he tells you that all men have the tendency of two things number one lies that men lie they don't lie because they are bad they lie because they are men <laughs> now listen 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 god is not a man that he should lie this weakness is not found in him and then not the son of man that he should repent so he's giving you an assurance that the one you are dealing with does not have this limitation god is not a man is called integrity integrity comes from the word integer sameness as within so without that god possesses that quality of dependability please write it down the first quality of god that the true bible faith is hinged on is his integrity 
this is not something that is easily achievable in the world of men integrity is hard as any sincere person integrity is not hard because you are bad it's hard because there are many limitations many of them beyond your personal control speaking from a human standpoint are we together i can tell you come and collect 10 naira from me because someone was supposed to give me that 10 naira and the person does not give me with respect to what i said if i don't give you i don't have integrity it does not mean i am bad whatever is the reason why i could not give you so that do you know what this means before god ever speaks he checks whether he has the ability to defend that statement there is like a spiritual immigration system he put around himself if god says i will lift you he said believe it i have checked every factor that can stop your lifting and i found out i am above it to have spoken like that faith faith is based on the integrity of god the second factor we have to rush i wish that we had all the time would have done an extensive teaching on faith because many believers do not know what faith is now it's the reason why few believers have consistent results the second quality of god upon which bible faith is based on is found in ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 please give it to us ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 his ability bible faith is based on god's integrity and god's ability please yola help me repeat god's integrity and god's ability one more time god's integrity and god's ability ephesians 3 20 now unto him who is able he tells you straight up that god is able so do not doubt there are many people who have integrity but they don't have ability integrity is the sincerity and the willingness to make true your commitment but do you have the ability if i have money i will bless you but you do not have the ability god has both the heart and the wherewithal so you will see jesus walking the express image of god he will say i will be thou cleansed i have both the integrity and i have the ability it will be dangerous if the only thing god has is integrity we will still be in trouble because you will say many true things but they will not come to pass are we blessed ability now unto him who is the him god and the bible says he is able not just to say there are people who are able to say but they are not able to do god is able to do now it is the doing part that surprises me that he is able to do above all Look at the one you are dealing with here above all that we ask i understand asking but he now says above all that we think hold on do you know how powerful the mind is go and ask nimrod kush genesis 11 there was no holy spirit there was no satan there was a healthy mind and they built a city that took only god to stop and god is saying now you have a mind empowered by the holy ghost and God is saying, still dare me. I am still able. Listen. This is the reason why you can stand and look at an empty land. And yet see a construction there. This is the reason why you can watch a sick body. They are telling you that this person is dying of HIV and cancer. And you can dare to say within it a moment. It is not your ability. You don't have that kind of power in yourself. The assignment of a true preacher is to bring situations face to face with this God and step back. That's your assignment. Master the art of bringing challenges face to face with God and step back. And you watch the wonder working power. This was the audacity that David had before Goliath. Goliath said, am I a dog? Israel, is this the best you can do? I know I will kill you, but respect me. I'm a veteran of war. And David said, you don't know me. You come to me with your bows, but I come with a covenant. I'm about to step back and leave you with that covenant. This is faith. You want to subdue kingdoms? 
it is not just by talking carelessly most believers keep saying oh i will get this uh -uh. your confession is only profitable if the law is that it starts from your heart first before your mouth you have to settle this for with the heart man believes unto righteousness i'm shaking away unbelief because some of you are here seated with all kinds of sicknesses some of you are here ministry is small and yet you see when god talks to you he talks like he's talking to himself you know that it is god speaking to you because you do not have the power to do what he's saying the moment god talks to you and it is possible it's not god you had that's a demon talking to you god talks to men like he's talking to himself because it is only his power that can make happen what he says Listen up. This is just an exhortation so that we can minister. Faith, the integrity of God and his ability. Now listen. You have to be convinced. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. It gives us a law. If we want to see a performance in our lives and you must subscribe to this law. It says for without faith that means outside of a realm of faith it is impossible to please him why for everyone who comes to god before you arrive there convince yourself first that he exists he is means he exists and then number two there is a name god is called that few people know he's called a rewarder a rewarder is not what he does is who he is god is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him are we blessed faith faith time will fail me to talk of all the patriarchs when god called abraham as a single man he told him carry your wife go to a land that i will show you and he began to move with a few people there came out of awe of the chaldeans by the end of the story he is a father of nations. God spoke and he believed. Took him a long time to believe. But finally he did. And the Bible says it was credited unto him for righteousness. And Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 says. And if ye be Christ. Then are ye Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. But if said if you are the children of Abraham. You will do the works of Abraham. That means you will not only claim Abraham's blessings. You will have Abraham's convictions. If you do not have Abraham's convictions, you will not get Abraham's blessings. Can I tell you this? There are many dimensions to faith. But one of the dimensions that must always be expressed in your life if you are, you are a man of faith is land. There is a relationship between faith and land. Somewhere in the equation of your faith, you will always be given grace and authority for territory. Are we blessed hear me many of us are too scientific to be used by god you calculate everything how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man mary said how will one plus one become ten anything plus god in it is the answer he gives anything one plus one is two you are right but one plus one plus God equals to the answer he chooses. Any answer, once you put God in an equation, the calculation changes completely. I'm saying this so that you can believe God. Listen, faith is not just what saying, it's not saying what God has said alone. It is also doing what he has said. Bible faith always leaves you with a responsibility a participatory responsibility if you do not find your participatory responsibility as far as actualizing any promise is concerned it will never come to pass there is always something to do deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 write it for reference that it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day then it says you will be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon you and overtake you there is always something to do joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 moses had, i mean uh, god admonishing moses now after 
Joshua after Moses died. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate during day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, observe to do, observe to do, observe to do all, not some, observe to do all that is written therein. Then and only then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and that you will have good success. Hallelujah. The classic character of faith is, you see, in the Bible, I don't know if I said this yesterday, but every time God wants to preserve his mysteries, he will enter a covenant with men that capture that dimension of that kingdom mystery and they will become his principal reference. Every time he wants you to walk in that dimension, he will refer you to those people. So when God wants you to understand faith and the blessing, the personality that represents the subject of faith is Abraham. If God wants you to, to understand encounters with God, how people are changed through encounters, the personality that captures that mystery is Jacob. If God wants you to understand the prevailing power of prayer and its ability to shift systems and territories, the personality that captures that dimension is Elijah. Are we together now? Yes. If God wants you to understand favor, how the favor of God works, the personality that he refers you to is Esther. If God wants you to understand deliverance, how that he's able to deliver to the Ottomans, the nation of Israel becomes the case study. So when the Bible lets us know about the subject of faith, according to Isaiah 51 from verse 1 and 2, it refers us to the patriarch Abraham and Sarah understudy their lives to, under, to find out the dynamics of faith. It says, Isaiah chapter 51. Can we have that goodness? It says, How good to me ye that follow after righteousness and seek the Lord, look out from the rock from whence you were hewn. Verse 2. It says, Look unto Abraham your father, understudy him, and to Sarah that body. It says, For I called him alone and blessed him, and what? Increased him. So you want enlargement through faith? There is a patriarch. The Bible mandates that we follow them who through faith and patience have obtained. Can I tell you what is a dream for you now is someone's reality and the Bible says follow them. There is something don't follow anybody if you do not find faith in the equation of the achievement. If you do not find faith if they did not have to believe God somewhere run away he says follow only those who you see their promise obtained through faith and patience. Are we learning something tonight? You must believe in God. Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says. For unto her there shall be a performance of those things spoken. Blessed is she that believes. Blessed is she that believes. Do you know the Bible says when you read John chapter 20, the last verse I believe. It says many other miracles Jesus did in the presence of his disciples that were not recorded in this book. It says, but this was written that you might believe and that in believing you will find life eternal. He wants us to believe. Listen to me. This Bible you see from Genesis to Revelation, it's a manifesto of God's integrity. He dares you. He says, look at it. Choose any verse and any scripture and see how faithful I have been so that you can believe me you are not the first to be in a situation down at esther i can pick women from a village to the palace as israel i can pick them from egypt you are not the first to desire lifting you are not the first to want to build a house you are not even the first to be cursed at jabez and jabez was more honorable than his brethren he said the mother bore him in sorrow but jabez changed the narrative of his destiny he says oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my tent and that your hand will be upon me and god answered him you are not the first to be in a situation of life and death our nation and our territory is not the first to go through economic turmoil a time came when the whole earth was in trouble 
in Genesis 42 and verse 1 and 2 even Jacob the prophet was hungry and the Bible says he called his sons he says why ye look at one another paraphrasing he said I have heard that there is corn when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt he gathered his sons he said I have heard that there is corn in Egypt he says go and buy that we may eat and not leave it was hunger that took Israel to Egypt hunger always takes God's people to Egypt there is only one reason why Israel goes to Egypt hunger beware of hunger that's why you must understand the blessing system of the kingdom because hunger can lead you from Israel to Egypt where you now become slaves every time Satan wants you to come to Egypt he does not have to say come he just programs an economic climate of hunger and when there is hunger even Jacob the prophet goes to Egypt are we learning something tonight faith I believe God and the Bible says the righteousness that is of faith speaks on this wise so faith is not silent if it is true faith there is an equation it first starts with conviction not confession confession comes from the word homologio that means repeat as you have heard it is the confession without conviction is just a mock of oneself I will rise I will rise I will rise uh -uh. your heart must be settled first it is from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks the mouth does not speak for the heart to know no meditation is how the heart receives when the heart now receives from the strength of meditation the mouth will speak are we together listen to me I want you to be careful what you hear because what you hear consistently becomes what you believe and what you believe and act upon is what becomes your reality understand this you must culture yourself from the negative news our world is full of all kinds of things you switch on the television and in one hour you are discouraged can i do ministry in yola ah. but i believe i believe jesus i believe i believe in miracles i believe in jesus i believe in signs and wonders i believe in increase I believe in multiplication I believe I believe that until my assignment is done no mortal man born of a woman can take my life no 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 it's not a general thing you choose what you believe this is my statement of faith I believe that the favor of God can turn the tides over a man I believe you can create your own spiritual climate like Goshen was in Egypt that even though there be darkness you can dwell in a realm of unapproachable light this is what I believe I have searched from scripture and I have found out that God can be trusted he is not a man servants of the living God let us get back to the authority of scripture don't just believe because a man you love said it you must go to the Word of God the woman the prostitute at the well when she met Jesus Christ after having a discussion with him and perceiving he was a prophet she began to bring the issues of worship and when Jesus gave her a new orientation the Bible says she ran and called people come see a man that told me what I have done they did not come because they believed in Jesus they came because they were surprised at her transformation but when they came they met Jesus themselves and after that encounter here was their testimony we now believe not because you said it your testimony was only an usher that led us to now have an encounter for ourselves believers it is good to believe the God of your pastor only if he, he will eventually become your God because it is your God that will produce your miracle Daniel 11 and verse 32 but the people that do know their God not another man's God another man's God you can tap through the covenant of covering and prophecy and submission we are coming there but principally your results will be obtained in this kingdom listen very carefully 
your results will be obtained in this kingdom based on the revelation of the God you know I know whom I have believed I don't just believe him I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded he says that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day the Bible says now there remaineth a rest for the people of God he says that today if you hear his voice harden not your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness they could not enter the rest of God even though they had the word like we did but the word did not profit them not mixed with faith in them that heard what is the faith the actions of obedience based on the truthfulness of what God said the first miracle recorded according to the synoptic account of John was the wedding in Cana and it was a demonstration of the might of God he says this beginning of miracles did Jesus are we together now and the Bible says that he revealed his glory the disciples now believed in him what was the miracle a feast was happening and the wine finished when the white finished there was going to be an embarrassment on the couple and then a few people found Jesus and Mary said whatsoever he says to do do it it may not make sense but do it and he said fix fill six vessels with water fetch that water and start moving to the ruler you know in those days rulers were cruel people any embarrassment will cost you your life immediately there was no counseling there was no advice you would die immediately why would you fetch water and be on your way to go and give a ruler prove that you trust me that much that God is not a man prove that you believe me that much so God tells you it's time to have a church and with 1,000 naira in your account you ask your friend and you foil his car and you say let's drive down Adamawa God spoke that it's time for us to establish that building and while you are doing that your senses is saying you must be crazy and you say no 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 it's not my fault i'm not the one who will fund it i'm only a steward the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful my assignment is to use my obedience and bring that situation face to face with the god of the bible listen the exploits of faith in this kingdom is based on the simple obedience Within a few minutes, we are going to be celebrating the hand of God and the move of God. And every one miracle, every one sign and wonder, restoration, your requests that have been written here. Many of you will be surprised to see the way doors open. It will be as though you were given a term in this conference. You see? Just like that. And then the glory goes to the Lord. Because I'm telling you, if you can believe God, there is no limit to what He can do. If you believe Him, and walk in keeping with the conditions allocated for actualizing that miracle being convinced and convicted will not bring the miracle it will only start the process you must walk in keeping with the conditions the conditions the conditions are we blessed in one minute I'd like you to lay hands on your head and say father increase my faith go ahead and pray increase my faith faith can grow faith can grow if your faith does not grow your possibilities will not grow if your faith does not grow your results will not grow if your faith does not grow you cannot have enlargement capacity to believe God capacity to believe God so then faith comes by hearing the hearing that produces understanding and that's by the word of God someone is praying hallelujah praise the Lord thank you so price number one that you have to pay is the price of accurate perception your belief systems and your spiritual orientation must be consistent with the Word of God price number two warfare there are powers that be that stop the advancement of God's people he was talking to the church in Thessalonica I desire even I to come to you once and again but Satan hindered us and so we pray and clear the spiritual highway number three is the price to build your faith Bible faith always produces results and the fourth price that you must pray you must pay the fourth price if you want enlargement is called the price of prophetic alignment write it down 
someone's life is going to change now the price of prophetic alignment I'm praying for you that what I'm about to share listen to me if you catch this revelation many of you will begin to run like Elijah that within a space of your life will so change believe me please pray in the spirit in one minute if you can go ahead and pray go ahead and pray hallelujah Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 let me teach you something about the prophetic God of vengeance has come my life God of miracles has won my battle I'm a winner man a winner man he has won my battle I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man, he has won my battles for me. The Bible says, Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, and by a prophet, the Lord, he was the one who brought them, but the technology and the dynamics is that by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel, where? out of Egypt he literally translocated them by the ministry of the prophetic he says and by a prophet was he the Israel of God preserved now please look up the prophetic ministry I think and it extends also to the apostolic is one of the ministries that has been misunderstood more than any other ministry are we together now on both sides of it there has been all kinds of imbalances and error so on one hand we have all kinds of things that are not they are not accurate as far as the administration of spiritual things is concerned all in the name of the prophetic and this came because of the way Africa Africa comes largely from a heritage of idol worship and superstition are we together so it is easy from that standpoint to be inclined to the prophetic but you see when you approach the prophetic without renewal and transformation you will inevitably end up dabbling between witchcraft and spirituality even though you are sincere it takes transformation to create coordinates of balance called transformation through scripture the absence of doctrine because the realm of the spirit is a vast realm open to all and the holy spirit is not the only usher that leads you there any spirit can usher you there and the moment you access the realm of the spirit whether demonically or spiritually you already have an advantage over the natural man pay attention please we're discussing the prophetic so the prophetic in africa has been marred with a different shade of imbalances are we together now and so many people because of the way the prophetic has been just feel that the only way to manage this is to avoid it completely because i'm not ready to dapple into anything that has to do with superstition or witchcraft and all of that but there is a role that the prophetic plays in actualizing destinies there is nobody please listen to me i'm sharing with you a deep mystery now no matter you are listen to me even if you meet jesus directly he will still refer you to the system he has put for rising you will always need men to change levels no no matter what your spiritual encounters are you will still be referred back ask saul when he met god and became paul you would think after an encounter with jesus christ he should not need any man again it was jesus himself that referred him back to the structure in the body go to the house of ananias stay there there is a man i have ordained now watch this sit down sit, sit down sit down sit down sit down sit down sit down 
when Jesus came the word of God his heavens were closed for 30 years Jesus your Jesus walked under a closed heaven for 30 years until he met a strange prophet called John your Jesus as anointed as he is the Holy Ghost did not come upon him and the father never called him son until he met a man please listen this is not idol worship forget about some of these things that go on wrong I'm communicating doctrine I'm showing you why many of you have remained at the same position because the grace sent to hold your hand not arrived this is true this is true listen listen carefully pay attention Jesus walked as though he was not the son of God for 30 years and then I hope you know that John was not a Baptist John was a prophet baptism was a strategy invented to help him identify the Christ and then number two to now help him introduce a sacrament of immersion and then to be resurrected into Christ are we together now so every time when John was in the wilderness as a prophet he was given a sign that every time he baptized he will look up you say go you are not the one he will baptize he will look up go you are not the one he will baptize he will look up now watch this please sit down sit down I'm teaching you something about the prophetic now John came to a point where he saw a 30 year old Jewish young man and he says no you are the ancient of days you are only in a 30 year old body he said i am not what behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world watch this john said i i you are god i'm a prophet i know what i'm seeing i'm not worthy to open your heavens jesus made a statement that is a warning to everyone he said suffer it to be so it's an ordinance if i don't submit to that ordinance my heavens will close I am Jesus, but suffer it to be so. No matter how anointed you are, no man ordains himself. No man honors himself. You can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor has to be conferred by another. Please sit down. Sit down. Fire is burning in this place now. Pay attention, please. I'm about to introduce something that if you understand for many of you this is the answer to the age-long prayer Lord why is it that I cannot shift there is a law you have been breaking sincerely so look up please the heaven you are going to that you so look forward to go and read how heaven was constructed heaven was constructed with the names of 12 apostles of the Lamb as the foundation the Bible says this is how the church was built. Look at the architecture of the church. Paul was given the privilege of seeing the architecture of the church. Pay attention. He said in the building of the church, the first person you meet is Christ. He's called the chief cornerstone. The moment you meet Christ, there are two strange ministries you must meet to rise. The apostolic and the prophetic. He calls them the foundation. Listen carefully. I don't mean the apostolic and the prophetic by name. Jesus wanted to do ministry. The Father was watching. The Holy Ghost was in heaven wanting to come. But where is the man that must give authorization? Because you see, that was the one who the mandate and the grace was upon. And even God would respect it. Let me tell you this. It is not only God you need to rise. It is only God you need to worship and your allegiance should go to. But when it has to do with the dynamics of manifesting destiny, you need God and you need the man he is using. Look up please. When the oil finished in the parable, it says go to them that sell. Not everybody is looking for oil. There are those who have it already and i showed you yesterday how they got it remember all those who have oil to sell you want to know how they got it go to second Kings chapter 4. once upon a time their oil was in a small cruise they didn't know what to do it was a prophetic they encountered that multiplied their oil that they now have enough to sell to others
Are we together? Thank you. So Jesus. Okay, help us with the sound. Jesus comes to John. And John says, Jesus says, suffer it to be so. Watch this. He dips John in water. He brings John out. And your Bible, the one you have on your hand now, says, and the heavens open. Over Jesus. Did he need the heavens open to do ministry? Yes, sir. Watch this. When the heavens open, two things happen. One, the Bible says the Holy Ghost descended in the similitude of a dove. It came and rested on him. And number two, a voice. Watch this. Watch this. A voice spoke and said, this is my beloved son now. Question, who was he before? God had to make that verdict. Your obedience has validated your sonship. Your compliance to my ordinances has validated your sonship. Now watch this. It says, this is my beloved son. Please catch this revelation. In whom I am well pleased. And he mentioned three words that if not spoken upon you, you can never expand. Yeah, ye, him. Question. Who has spoken to the territory to hear you? Jesus did not just manifest. He would have been surprised. God himself made a declaration. Hear ye him. He went to the desert. A crowd came. He went to the riverside. A crowd came. He climbed a mountain. A crowd came. Resources came from fish. Came from earth. Because a command was given. Hear ye him. That means whatever it will take for his ministry to find visibility, let it come. Listen to me. I don't doubt your call. But do you have the hear ye him? Is, has that grace been placed on your life? There are many gifted people in this city, genuinely anointed on fire. But you organize a meeting, there is nobody to come and hear what God is saying. And you know that God is saying something through you. There is a hear ye him grace. But it comes by submission to God's protocol of operation. Not even Jesus missed that. Are we together now? Abraham was at a point in his life where it seemed like nothing would happen except prophecy. And he returned from war and he met a strange king of an ancient city called Salem called Melchizedek watch this Abraham honored him and here was what Melchizedek said blessed be Abraham son of the most high I make you possessor of the heavens and the earth watch this do you know brothers and sisters we're about to pray do you know that prophet Samuel was a man is that true when God rejected Saul as king, David was already having visions as the next king. God was ready, but the prophet he will use was still negotiating for Samuel. And a man's destiny was suffering because the prophet that will announce him was not cooperating with God. Can you imagine that? God is ready to lift you. But the prophet you will use was still negotiating. And you think God will say, no, 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 no. I have options. Look at how God had to come himself to negotiate with Samuel. He says, Samuel, um, why do you continue to weep seeing that I have rejected Saul as king? Take your horn and go to the house of Jesse. You are, you are delaying someone who is ready because you are the prophet who should ordain him. See, hold on. Do you know what made Saul to lose his throne? He was not knowing the rankings in the spirit of men. He thought that because you are a king, it also means that you are a priest and a prophet. And so they kept putting pressure on him. Offered the sacrifices. Samuel is wasting our time. And out of pressure, he offered the sacrifices. Samuel came and said, you have done foolishly. You would have allowed me to come. This is an office. He said, uh, God would have established your throne forever. But now that you have done this, the kingdom is taken away from you. It would have been, thou son of Saul, have mercy on me. 
but now he lost it can i tell you this this is not human worship but please hear me yola all men are not equal we are equal in christ the same lord is rich unto all are we together but in terms of our personal sacrifices alongside the election of grace it has separated us into spiritual cadres. this should not bring pride but let me tell you this you can remain for a long time and god will be watching you as merciful as he is until the day you find the grace sent to lift you not the grace available there were many widows in zarephath but to none was elijah sent elijah passed other widows and greeted them but the day he went to the one he was sent to that was the end of our situation are you learning something here when it was time for the nation of israel in exodus chapter 14 we don't have the time these guys continue to cry before god how many of you know that according to the prophecy that was given to abraham they would spend 400 years question who added the 30 extra years one man moses the slow pace of his training added the captivity of the people he was to deliver because until he was ready he now went to Ramesses, his half brother who had now become the pharaoh of egypt thus saith the god of the hebrews let my people go and pharaoh said what nonsense are you speaking about after 10 plagues he allowed them to go by a prophet when he brought them out watch this they got to a point where they were standing before the red sea and the egyptians were running after them they were angry and they said moses we told you we would have just remained slaves but moses said no exodus 14 verse 13 please give it to us we are reading from 13 to 15 that's what is happening to someone this night in the name of jesus christ exodus 14 from verse 13 exodus 14 from verse 13 14 14 media exodus 14 from verse 13 and moses said unto the people yola fear ye not it says stand still and see the salvation of the lord which he shall show you when talk to me when not tomorrow today it was a prophet who was speaking what god was about to do and he said for the egyptians for the cancer for the situations that you see today that you will see them no more forever next verse next verse it says the lord will fight for you so when a prophet is coming it is the lord fighting for you moses was there with them and he was saying the lord was fighting for them how did the lord fight for them by giving them the advantage of the prophetic are we learning something next verse 15 moses the lord now said to moses i have promised them that i will fight for them but if we keep quiet nothing will happen to them why criest thou unto me you are a prophet i have spoken echo what i have said speak unto the children of yola and tell them that they go speak unto them that they go last scripture acts i mean second kings chapter 6 verse 1 second kings chapter one please give it to us very quickly we're about to pray i hope the lord is working your faith and building capacity to know that something is coming on you one of these these women three that are sitting as i just saw fire coming on one of you right now i stretch my hands these two in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing fire come on you and the lord is saying in this season i'm about to announce you take that grace i come as one sent in the name of jesus christ listen 
I want you to pay attention to what the Lord is going to be doing in your life. One thing I know for sure is that you will never be the same. Yeah. Hallelujah. Two, three people will start running out by the anointing. Just hold them and bring them out. Hold them. The power of God is coming on them. They will start running physically. Is it? I'm not saying start running by your. It's the power of God that will bring you. Just hold them, whether you are an usher or not, whether they are inside or outside. Bring them, please. Please bring them. Second Kings chapter six. My God, fire is about to burn in this place. No, don't bring them out. Not these ones. Not this one. The instructions is those running by the Spirit. Just bring them out. The era of delay is coming to an end. Please help them. Just hold them. I want to speak to them. Then they can go back. Haya, haya, beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.